Let's talk about a few additional lighting considerations. The first thing we should address is the uh, density of light maps. So if we select the dog's body and then we look over in the details panel and scroll down to the lighting section, there's a little box here that uh, says overridden uh, light map res. And you can see that the box is currently unchecked and that there's a, a sort of a grayed out 64 in that box. If we select the brain, you can see that it has the same 64 there. The eyeballs have a 64 and so do the pupils. Okay, now let's take a look at the floor and if we select it, you can see that I have uh, overridden the light map resolution and I've set that to 2000. So what these numbers mean is that when Unreal Engine calculates the, uh, the light map for the dog body, because I've set the resolution to 64, uh, or I guess in this case, because I haven't changed it from the default of 64, it's going to use 64 pixels across this way and 64 pixels down uh, as the, uh, the density for that dog's light map. And the floor, on the other hand, is going to use 2,000 across, 2,000 across that way. So um, let, let's actually take a look at a way that we can visualize the density of the light map. If we go to uh, this lit button up here and change the view mode, uh, under optimization view modes, we'll go to light map density and turn that on. You can see that this is what 64 pixels across looks like in virtual space. This is what 2000 pixels across looks like. And notice too that the color changes in areas where that density is greater. So you can see that the, uh, the pupils are red hot in, in the light map density. And the reason that Unreal Engine is set up this way to um, kind of give you this um, heat map kind of um, visualization of the density is that when you make a really complex level, you'll have hundreds, sometimes thousands of different items in the level, and you need a way of very quickly being able to, to look around to find areas that are, are too dense, uh, so that if you have an issue with, uh, say, your frame rate dropping to be really low, uh, you can find the problems and fix them. It's also really interesting to note here, if we zoom in on the brain, that we can't see the grid at all. So even without baking the lighting and then looking at the brain, we could have actually just visually diagnosed that there, that there was going to be a problem with it. Um, so um, there's one other thing I want to show you here with the light map density. Take a look down here uh, at the shadows that are coming off of uh, the, the dog's leg. Because we have set this uh, floor to be static, uh, you can actually see that um, this is not really a, a perfectly clean, kind of pristine shadow. So uh, it could make sense to even consider raising the light map resolution to, say, 4000 in this case. Um, and of course, it's going to not look very good because uh, I just invalidated the light map. Um, uh, but just be aware that um, if, you, um, if you crank up the light map resolution too much on too many objects, there will be a performance cost that can slow down your GPU. Um, and uh, it's also worth noting that uh, if you have an issue with, um, say, the, the light map um, not getting created correctly when you import, you could set your brain uh, on, the, on the dog to be movable. And what that will do is the next time that we bake, actually, let me, let me set the floor back to 4,000 how I had it to. So we just made two changes here. We increased the light map resolution on the floor and we set the brain to be dynamic, or um, I'm sorry, movable. So let's go ahead and bake that. And we'll go up to the build button and I'll pause the video. And now that the lighting build is complete, we'll take a look at the results here. You can see that the shadow is smoother and the brain now, because we have set it to be movable, is displaying properly without those weird um, um, disappearing parts. So um, one of the reasons that I wanted to show this to you, uh, how we could change this problematic um, uh, piece of geometry from static to movable, uh, is that 
uh, when you're importing your sculptures into Unreal Engine for the first time, you may not have UVs at all. And so uh, because you don't have UVs, you won't have light maps. And if you try to bake those things, uh, you're going to get some really bad results. So um, I recommend uh, for objects that do not have UVs, go ahead and set those uh, to movable. And, uh, and that way um, they'll show up correctly. Just be aware, though, that <clears throat> there is a performance cost to um, having things be set to movable because uh, Unreal Engine then has to calculate the lighting in real time. So the very best in terms of performance is to have a, uh, a static mesh that has good UVs and uh, that during that import process, because it has good UVs, it's able to come up with good light maps. And then you would use static light on it as well to really um, uh, pre-compute uh, the lighting and, and speed things up um, during real-time gameplay. Let's take a look at a couple of other really um, simple things in Unreal Engine. If we zoom up, you'll see that we have this uh, yellow bounding box around our stuff here. This is a light map, uh, I'm sorry, a light mass importance volume. And basically what this does is it tells Unreal Engine to spend extra effort computing the lighting uh, when, when, we, um, when we build it. And so um, you should have one of these light mass importance volumes in your starter content that you um, brought into the level. If you don't see one in your level uh, in the world outliner, you can just drag one in and uh, just make it uh, scaled up so that it encompasses all of the important parts of your level that would need to show up well. And um, the final point I want to make about building lighting is that it can take quite a long time, sometimes even an hour or, or longer to build lighting. And uh, sometimes you can have a crash while lighting is building. So just make sure that you save your levels uh, before you uh, start to build your lighting.